Hey guys, this is Vin with Agony Gaming, and today I'm going to show you my Damage Warrior build. For those of you that are visiting us, this may be something that you've seen before. I use the same build as Strife. Uh, however, for those of you that haven't seen Strife's build, or um, my guild members that are just trying to see what I use for my Warrior, this is going to be a brand spanking new experience for you. So let me go ahead and start here. I'll cover my gear first. Um, every single slot, armor, weapons, and accessories, I use Berserker gear. Now, Zerker gear, for those of you that don't know, is power, precision, and crit. So you'll see that on every slot that I show you as I go through this video. Um, I chose personally not to use runes. I know Strife does the same thing. I used uh, ruby orbs instead for power, precision, and crit. However, there are runes out there that you can use if you want that sort of slot. Uh, and if the six, if the six runes for whatever their their bonus is is important to you, you can go that route too. This is just what I prefer. Um, for my main set of weapons, I use an axe in the main hand with a sigil of accuracy to add critical chance, and I use a mace offhand. Uh, with a bloodlust sigil for 10 power each time I kill a foe. Now your second weapon is swappable. If you're in a dungeon or a situation that doesn't require a ranged attack, this is going to be your best bet. You're going to want to use a great sword for that and also with a sigil of accuracy on it. And I'll explain why in my rotation later how the axe, mace, and great sword work really well together. Um, however, if you're in something like Fractals or maybe Lubicus in a raw or whatever fight may require a ranged weapon, um, I would definitely recommend the rifle. Um, the rifle is your better single target option. It's going to do the most damage and there's also some traits that you can do to make it do more damage or make skills recharge faster and I'll show you those here in just a moment. Um, your other option is a longbow, and longbow is a, is a great alternative if you need AoE, say like on the Fire Shaman in Fractals. Uh, when he spawns those Lava Elementals, it's really helpful to be able to do damage to both the Fire Shaman as well as the adds that he summons. So depending on the situation, those are probably your best options for your second weapon slot there. And then for your accessory slots, as you can see with mine, again, I'm using Power Precision Crit, as I had mentioned earlier. Anything that's ascended, I've got slotted for agony resistance. Um, I, we run a lot of fractals in my guild, so you know I always have those equipped because I know I'm going to need that agony resistance when I go in there. Uh, anything that's not ascended, however, I'm using an exquisite ruby jewel for more power, precision, and crit as well. So next, let me go ahead and tell you about my skills and traits. I do a 20-25-0-10-15 build. Um, it just doesn't seem necessary to go all the way up to Grand Master in any of these, so I wouldn't bother if I were you. That's completely up to you. Uh, strength, I went 20. Um, that gives you the Berserker's power, which is number 5. That increases damage based on how much adrenaline you have built up. For those of you that don't know, adrenaline is this bar next to the F1 skill. Um, so with with number 5 here in strength, you can go up to 12% increased damage as long as that bar is full of adrenaline. For this reason, you likely aren't going to use your F1 skill that often. Um, you do more damage uh, with adrenaline in there than you're going to do by using that one skill over the amount of time that it takes to build that adrenaline back up. Um, next, I use Slashing Power, which gives my Greatsword and Spear damage. Uh, an increase of 10%. This one, if you're not using your greatsword, you're going to want to swap out for something else because otherwise you're completely wasting that trait. Uh, next in arms, the first one I choose is rending strikes. Uh, this gives you a 33% chance to cause, cause vulnerability with critical hits. It's really nice because this build you're critting all the time, so hopefully you can get those vulnerability stacks. Plus, with the mace number 4 skill, you're adding more vulnerability stacks. This will help you do more damage as well as your party. 
And then next, I would choose Forceful Greatsword. Uh, this helps you gain might on critical hit. Again, you're critting all the time, so you're constantly gaining might uh, as long as you're using a greatsword or spear. And then that also makes your greatsword and spear attacks recharge 20% faster. This is another one that you would swap out if you're not using a greatsword. And probably the best thing to swap it out for, as I had mentioned with the rifle earlier, is crack shot. Uh, that will make your shots pierce, but it also uh, will help those skills recharge 20% faster. Uh, next in tactics, I chose empowered, which increases damage for every boon on you. So depending on your group makeup, your damage can significantly increase here. I know on COF path runs, if you, or COF path one farming runs, if you have like a guardian, a mesmer, and a couple other warriors in there, you have a ton of boons on you, and your damage just goes up crazy amounts. Uh, I've seen it as high at one point as a, a crit for 34,000 using 100 blades. So uh, that's definitely a great trait to have. Uh, next would be discipline where you would use heightened focus. This is an additional 2% crit if you're stage 1 adrenaline, 5 for 2 or 9 for 3rd stage. So again this is why it's beneficial to keep your adrenaline bar full because you'll do more damage that way. So next, let me go ahead and explain to you my uh, traits and, or I'm sorry, my skills, how I use them, how the axe works, how it works with the great sword, and all of that. Um, so for starters, I use Omnomberry Ghost. This is going to give me an additional 70 precision, as well as a 66% chance to steal health on critical. Now, prior to the nerf. It was great to use a axe mace and axe axe combo because you could run into a mob whirlwind and your health wouldn't even budge because you'd be gaining so much back. However, since the 26th of February, they've made it to where food has an internal cooldown and it's not mentioned in the tooltip how long that internal cooldown is. So even though I have a 66% chance on crit, that internal cooldown doesn't keep it from popping as much. So what this does with the Zerker is it gives you a little less survivability. You're definitely going to want to be careful running a full Zerker set. You want to make sure that you're aware of your surroundings and uh, using your dodge consistently and staying out of AoE and, and that sort of stuff because running full Berserkers makes you a little bit squishy. So if you're not careful, you can die very easily. Um, for those of you that aren't comfortable running Zerkers, you can swap out a few of these pieces or play around with your accessories even. Um, and you can swap those out for Knight's gear. Knight's is very similar. It's power, precision, and toughness. So you'd lose some of your critical chance, but you would gain some survivability. It's kind of a matter of preference there, but I would not overdo it on the, the Knight's gear if you're wanting to maximize the damage that you can do with this class. So back to the skills here, um, your axe skills, the first three um, are, are somewhat useful. Uh, you know, number two does toss on vulnerability, so that coupled with your number four skill is going to toss on even more vulnerability. So what I'll do going into a fight is I'll basically go one through five. I'll start with my auto attack. I'll add some vulnerability. I'll cripple them just because I can. Um, I'll use Crushing Blow to use more vulnerability, and then I'll knock them down. Immediately after I've got those eight stacks of vulnerability up on my target, I'll switch over to my Greatsword. The Greatsword, uh, number two ability, 100 Blades, is awesome when you've got vulnerability stacked on a target. This is where you're going to get your most damage, and this is where I had mentioned earlier you could hit for up to 34,000 if you have the right group makeup. Um, that's my personal record as far as I know it, it could be higher so um, again as soon as those vulnerability stacks are up switch over to your great sword and use that after that you're kind of just buying time really until you can switch back to your axe mace again and go back through the same rotation again one through five stack your vulnerability and then back to great sword so you're basically switching your weapon I think it's every eight seconds that you're able to do so in combat so you're constantly switching between those two weapons. Um, let me cover my utility skills next, and then um, I'll show you how this rotation works on a couple of targets out there. 
Now, your number six ability, I use Healing Surge, and the reason being is it helps you regain all of your adrenaline. So going into a fight, if you're not going to need a heal within 30 seconds, or at least if you're fairly confident that you won't, uh, you can pop this before even going into a fight to max out your adrenaline, so you're automatically doing more damage than you would without it. Um, and the heal also heals you based on your current adrenaline level, so later on if your adrenaline's full, ideally it will be if you're not using that F1 skill, um, you'll heal for more, which is, which is kind of nice since you're running full Zerker. Uh, next, you're going to be using For Great Justice, which gives Fury and Might to yourself and your allies. I use Shake It Off so I can cure conditions from myself. It also helps break any stuns that I might be under. Uh, number nine is Interchangeable. I prefer Dolyak Signet for myself just because it reduces incoming damage and adds some survivability since I'm not running any survivability in my gear. However, I've seen a lot of warriors use the Banner of Discipline which improves precision and critical damage for yourself and your allies. So uh, if you don't need that extra survivability, definitely toss down the banner, and it's just going to increase your damage again by more and more. Um, and then lastly, Signet of Rage. This is the best option for the DPS build. It gives you Fury, Might, and Swiftness. Uh, while it's passive, it grants Adrenaline. But what you're going to be doing during your rotation is you're going to be keeping for Great Justice and Signet of Rage on cooldown at all times, meaning any time they're available to cast, if you want to maximize your damage, cast them. Make sure that they're always on cooldown. Um, Signet of Rage is swappable in certain situations. Uh, if you do swap it, I would recommend swapping it for Battle Standard. And that's for those situations where you know that your party members are more likely to be falling a little bit more frequently, such as the uh, Fire Shaman in Fractals. Uh, it seems like there's always a couple people down at a time. It's just a really tough battle. So any of those situations where you need to get someone up quickly because you don't have a lot of time to sit around and res, uh, Battle Standard is really good for that. But unless it's one of those situations, I would stick with Signet of Rage personally. So let me go ahead here. I will go out and attack a mob, and I'll show you how this rotation works. We've got a Risen Putrefier right outside this encampment here. So I'll run up. I'll start with my number two ability. There's some vulnerability. Number four ability, more vulnerability. Knock him down, switch over, and he went down that fast. Um, you don't get a chance really to see how high you can hit with 100 blades on these little guys. But uh, it's pretty good. Um, so now let me go ahead and toss on for Great Justice and Signet of Rage so you can see the difference with those Might stacks. There's this Risen Noble here. Again, vulnerability. Some more vulnerability. And swap over to 100 Blades. And he's already down that quick. As you noticed, almost every single hit is a crit uh, with this particular build. And this is by far, in my experience, the absolute best build that you can use to maximize your damage on a warrior. Um, I've tried the condition build as well, and it just doesn't seem to add up or come remotely close to the amount of damage you pump out in this build. So there you have it. That's my damage build, uh, and this has been with Agony Gaming. For this video and more, please subscribe to us on our YouTube channel. Or you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter at AGNY Gaming. You can also check us out online on our own website at agonygaming.net.